opening comments. For the most accessible Reaper setup, you're going to need to get a copy of Reaper itself from reaper.fm. You need Asara, the open source accessibility extension, which you can get from asara.reaperaccessibility.com, with Asara being spelled O-S-A-R-A. -A. I'm going to be using the most recent release of the Asara key map throughout these recordings. It's important that you're aware of that, because if you're following along at home and your version of Asara is out of date, chances are a lot of these keystrokes that I'm going to be referencing won't be the same for you. So pop over to asara.reaperaccessibility.com when you start listening to this and make sure you've got the latest version installed. Any Asara release from end of October 2020 going forward should get you into a good spot. I'd also recommend you install the SWS extensions. They're not strictly necessary, but they are a big productivity booster. And we do use some actions from the SWS extensions on the Asara key map. So for the smoothest user experience, if you're following along at home, you're going to want to get those installed. You can get them from sws-extension.org. If you're a JAWS user, head over to snowmanradio.com Grab yourself the free JAWS scripts. Jim Snowbarge has done an excellent job. They really boost the user experience. I'd highly recommend you go into Reaper using a full keyboard with a numpad. And if you're a Windows user, ideally a keyboard with an applications key because Shift F10 doesn't always work as a substitute for the apps key inside Reaper. If you're stuck on a laptop or some keyboard that doesn't have an applications key, grab yourself a free remapper utility. There's a ton of them out there. I use one called Sharp Keys, which uh, you've caught me short. I don't have a link to it to hand. But if you type Sharp Keys, all one word, into your favourite search engine, you should be able to find it no bother. Community resources, there's a ton of them. You can join us on the RWP email list, which stands for Reapers Without Peepers. You can join that on the web by going to groups.io forward slash g forward slash rwp or if you're the type of creature that prefers email send a blank email to rwp plus subscribe at groups.io there's also a whatsapp channel which is super supportive and tons of fun to be part of if you want to join that go to tiny.cc forward slash reaper access from any device with whatsapp installed Reaper Access is all one word. The R of Reaper and the A of Access are uppercase. There's also a shared Dropbox folder with a ton of custom actions and effects templates and loads of other useful goodies. You're more than welcome to view a snapshot of that or download a copy at tiny.cc forward slash Reaper Dropbox. And again, the R and the D of Reaper and Dropbox are uppercase. Whew, that was a lot to take in, wasn't it? Luckily, Everything I've just talked about is linked from reaperaccessibility.com. When you get there, just click on the useful links and resources article and work your way through it. If you get stuck installing any of that stuff, get yourself onto RWP, tell us how far you've gotten, and someone will be along to help you get the rest of it hooked up. As a screen reader user, you're going to spend the most amount of time working in Reaper's track control panel window, which is where we work with tracks, no prizes for guessing that part, but also where we work with items. And an item is anything that you've recorded or imported onto a track. Any media that's in the project is always going to be contained within an item. We'll probably take a little dive through the menu system as well. Not an expansive one, but just a few tweaks to configure Reaper for the task at hand. Reaper's accessible on the Mac too, so I'm going to be trying to remember to throw in Mac equivalent keystrokes as I go. If at any point I forget, which I probably will, what you need to know is that control on Windows usually gets translated to command on the Mac, and alt on Windows usually translates to option on the Mac. Samplitude requires you to have a third party solution called Samplitude Access. These are a set of JAWS scripts which enable you to access the door to its maximum. So in turn you will need a copy of the screen reader JAWS from versions 2018 to 2020, which is the latest current version to access Samplitude. Versions of Samplitude supported are Samplitude Pro X4, Pro X4 Suite, Pro X5 and Pro X5 Suite, which again is the current latest version. There's a website you can visit, which is samplitudeaccess.org.uk. 
There's an email list you can join, which is VIP Audio Access at freelist.org. And there's also a WhatsApp group, which you can inquire about if you decide to join the mailing list. The main window in Samplitude we will be using is called the Arranger. We will also touch upon the Track Manager and the Parameter Dialog. Logic is quite accessible out of the box, and as it's an Apple product, there is currently no Windows version available. The default key commands that load up in Logic leaves a little to be desired for a screen reader user, so I strongly recommend installing a set of third-party key commands. The one I prefer to use is the Logic Keyboard Ninja key commands, and you can download those by visiting logickeyboard.ninja. There are a set of open source macros in the form of Flogic. They do need to be updated. However, they do still provide some spoken feedback, so they can still be taken advantage of to make things more efficient. For more information on Flogic to see what works, what doesn't work currently, visit logic.band slash Flogic. That's L-O-G-I-C dot B-A-N-D slash Flogic, F-L-O-G-I-C. And on that page, you'll also find a link to the GitHub page where you can download Flogic. An extended keyboard, that's a keyboard with a numpad, can be useful in Logic. It's not required. You can fully take advantage of Logic with a laptop keyboard. However, to quickly jump to specific markers by default or map to the numpad. So if you make every use of markers, you may want a keyboard with a numpad or you will have to remap those key commands. A control surface is not required in Logic, but it definitely can make life a little bit more efficient. Any control surface that supports the MCU protocol will work well in Logic. Huey is also supported. There is a Logic accessibility mailing list on Google Groups. If you'd like to subscribe, send an email to logic-accessibility plus subscribe at googlegroups.com and the regular email address to participate is just logic-accessibility at googlegroups.com. There's also a WhatsApp group. Feel free to ask about joining that on the Google Groups as well. The main windows in Logic that we'll be dealing with are going to be the main arrangement window, the mixer, which can be opened in its own window, and the windows for dealing with plugins. And we'll get into all of those. Pro Tools is very accessible on the Mac, not yet on Windows. Although not necessary, there is a set of open source macros available from flowtools.org, which greatly increases efficiency. Uh, most blind users using Pro Tools are using Flow Tools as well. An extended keyboard is highly recommended. It's not necessary, but it uh, really helps uh, in certain situations. A control surface, again, as well, is not necessary, but it really does go a long way for any DAW, really, of course. Um, there is a community at ptaccess at googlegroups.com. Um, there is a WhatsApp group. One could inquire in the uh, Google Groups about that. And uh, the main windows in Pro Tools will be the Mix window, the Edit window, and the Plugin window. And we'll take a look at those later.